<laughs> Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I am Jonathan Beyer. Hi. And this is episode 2752, Finlandia Trophy and the Japan Open and, Japan. Ah. and other re random caddy commentary. Uh, oh, Jonathan, where is this sweater from? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> I'm in Canada, as you know, singing in Turandot, so I went all Canadian and bought my root sweater in it honor is, of the Canadian pairs. It yeah. is heaven on you. and it. I'm into the I, Canadians. I'm into this 80s throwback music they have going on. Throw on some Phil Collins, put on a root sweater, call it an evening. Yeah. Yes, I am <laughs> so here for it. Uh, Drink some hats. That's the beer. The Canada oh. beer is that is the beer. Okay. And, you know, we have, um, apparently we said the word Mei Mihara instead of Mai Mihara, and it's Medvedjeva. Do people want to know it's Medvedjeva? Someone tried to say that we've been all been saying Moskvina wrong for years, and I was saying, you know what? Don't throw me off now. You know, I'm hanging on by a thread here. I mean, this is... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is... <laughs> <laughs> we also say when you walk into a house, you walk into a foyer instead of a foyer. So we, as Americans, have to choose which words we pronounce correctly and which ones we make our own. <laughs> Is it target or target? I mean, you know, foyer, foyer. I can't. It depends how much you're spending, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's start. Before we go into the events, there was one other thing I forgot to put in our timeline, but I think it's better off the cuff, Jonathan, that I get your response from this. Uh-oh. Okay. So last week, we, we talked about it, but we hadn't seen video. At about Monday morning, it emerged on YouTube, Moulin Rouge for the third year with Ashley Wagner. Jonathan, how does it look? We were asked this on Twitter, what our opinion was. And I think people forget that we have like a show sometime where we give our opinion. That's the whole point of watching. Why are we just going to tell you ahead of time? But yeah, so what did you make of uh, Dina <clears throat> Wagner's performance? Ah, uh, Wow. That's tough. That's tough. Sometimes I need to really <laughs> think hard about how to be positive. It doesn't always come naturally for me. I think... You know how three Ashley, times is supposed to be the charm? Yeah, I think Ashley Wagner is a great lesson in perseverance. <laughs> uh, he's done some wonderful, inspiring things for young skaters. That's all I can say on that. What's the funny is that point, usually last year, if we ever criticized Ashley, we would be given hate mail because she is the top U.S. lady. But she seemed to offend the gays and white women, two very important figure skating demographics, when she faked us out that she was going to do La La Land and then didn't. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so glad she didn't do La La Land, but I was like... This was also not the solution. Um, How about when I watched that 17-minute Jackie Wong thing on my uh, on my, my 4G or my LTE at work, using up my minutes, and there was about no choreography in the actual program. Meanwhile, they're talking yeah. about cliches, like the music is very important. Ashley told us it was her yeah. favorite program ever, and we never saw it, and she went back to something else. She's right here and she wants to be or something. She's not looking at out. She's not looking outward. She's only looking inward. And you know, I think um, timing is tough for her, and she's just sticking this out so she can maybe get another team medal and some press or she something. She really peaked but... like a year to eighteen months following the last Olympics, and she got yeah. that medal. In... Which is great. I mean, you know. Look, um, Jill Trenery in 1990 was not the same Jill Trenery as at the 1991 Skate Canada or those sectionals that are on YouTube in like three parts because they don't want you and to... Next, don't you think that Ashley is Jill Trenery? Yes. I have, They're twinsy, except she knew when to get out. You know, Jill had but, better yeah. hair. Although Ashley's hair is... She's the bra And she needs a new dress if you're going to spruce it up. I mean, Jenny and Todd, when they repeated Nessun Dorma for the third time, it was always a different ombre each time. It was basically Yeah. <laughs> it was green into like teal or blue one year or blue into teal, whatever, and then they went the blue route. But I think the third year is when you're TOS. So yeah. we need to explain what TOS is if people haven't picked up on it over the years. What that means is you are tired old shit. And what that means is is that is that we still love you. We nostalgically love you hardcore. And like we Dennis admire Dick that you're 
like Daisuke Takahashi at the last Olympics, we love you so much that we want to pretend that you are still the peak version of yourself and you haven't delivered yeah. in some time. Jonathan, I thought Ashley was slow. I thought the spins were labored. Yeah. I thought the spins, the positions were weak. I thought she didn't have the same energy. It could be early in the season, but I thought that she just looked bored of it. Um, yeah. Well, I how thought, could you not be? I thought the program yeah. was endless. Endless. Yeah. Um, the jumps were fine. Everything was fine. It was just, you know, it got about a 130 and change or, or 120 and change in uh, California, but it would be um, very... Uh, bad for your judging career to attack one of the top U.S. ladies in a uh, local competition in the Olympic season. Yeah. So I don't know if I, I worry how she'd be scored internationally uh, with that effort. I just don't know. Especially with Tessa and Scott and everyone else doing Moulin Rouge at the same time. It seems like a bad confluence. She's had a moment with it. She's already had a moment with it. You know, mm -hmm. like when Jeremy brought back the Muse program for the Olympics, it's like, because he's like, like, I didn't feel like I had my moment with it or whatever but like she's had moments mm -hmm. with this program so now i'm unsure as to why uh but that's that and interesting segue here we go i was surprised that she was not invited to the japan open <clears throat> and you have know knowledge about this this kind of management world and things like that so, so i was curious just, to get your take yeah yes. the japan open is an img event so they are like the um, big bad agency of skating. And if you are with them, you are... And of opera. Okay. But yes, okay. <laughs> and they are putting on the tours. And when you are not with IMG and they have a stranglehold on these events, it is hard because the agents also get a percentage of whatever earnings. Um, right. So if Yuki Sagusa, <laughs> who's the agent for Nathan... Um, for Mirai and Karen. She was also Gracie's agent, so she initially had Gracie, Karen, and Nathan. She is racking up that third place prize money every year. Um, Which is not nothing to scoff at. It's mm -hmm. big money, even if you finish last, right? It it's is like big money. Grand it's, or something. And it has a full, <clears throat> there's a big crowd. It makes you feel like the good old days. I mean, yeah, it really does. A, a paycheck and people in the stands, and yes, so. Uh. It was uh, interesting, and Ashley's been with CIA now for a, about a year, so she used to be with David Baden. So, uh, she's CA. I'm sorry, she's CAA, Creative Arts. Oh, okay. I thought you said CIA, like she was being under investigation for doing Moulin Rouge again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I Maybe I had a speech impediment, I thought, uh, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, the ladies, yeah, I think they were. I think that's why Han Yu doesn't do it. I don't know who represents him, but he's never there, and surely they would want well, Because they do call it the North American team, although this was an all American team. But um, Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know why Caitlin Osmond wasn't there. I'm not really sure. But anyway, okay. it was um, a, quite the stacked field with uh, Mariah Nagasu, Karen Chen, Mai Mihara, Marin Honda, uh, Alina Zagitova and Evgenia Medvedeva. Medvedeva. Okay, Jonathan. Oh, so this was quite the stacked field to start the season. Yeah, this was competitive. Um, I yeah, I think um, even if Ashley is peaking for nationals, by the way, I thought that the quality of her all of her elements was poor, and I think that that would have been reflected if she were at the Japan Open. So maybe it's good that she's not there yet. Has yeah. a couple of weeks to get, you know the spins looking a little bit like they're moving. Um, so I uh, let's start with Mariah Nagasu because she is kind of my pick at this moment uh, to win the U.S. Uh, figure skating championships. Um, ah. I think that she looks like a mean, lean, jumping machine here. She got just about all of those rotations around after uh, the axle. She really rotated a lot of those jumps that she's gotten dinged for in the past. She did the... She's it's getting close that axle every time like yeah I, I feel confidence in it i don't yeah. think it's like perhaps like another person's quad lutz or something <laughs> like, like this real tangible thing that can happen you know the mistake was kind of sizable on the axle here and i and i thought what was impressive is that the rest of the jumps were so high you know in the past it seems like if mariah made a mistake she perhaps would get defeated and the program would go. I mean, we're used to Gracie programs where one mistake meant catastrophe for the rest of the program. Just get off the ice. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 
I thought that Mariah got stronger as the program went on. I mean, she didn't have any choreography to get in the way, so I think that that was really good um, with the jumps. That, that makes it easier, yeah, for sure, <laughs> when you don't have to worry about transitions or emotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, but that double axle, triple toe was the best we have seen it. The triple loops were high. The jumps have more inches to them. She looks oh. really determined uh, for this season and she looks to be building confidence and the momentum uh, seems to be behind her. Now, so obviously here's the issue. Mm -hmm. We So we have this thing. She was not, I don't think she was called for under rotations. No. At all. No, they were, they were quite good. And, uh, at the cost of clearly she has this yin yang. I mm -hmm. can give you complete concentration where I'm landing everything cleanly, mm -hmm. or I can emote like she did at one of the Grand Prix last year, but then gets buried in the marks. Mm -hmm. So all the fans mm -hmm. that love her and know her to have the potential to emote are upset that she's not, not providing that. However, I kind of get it. I, I'm like, fine, just be the machine for a while and create new buzz about you, where mm -hmm. you're getting full credit for all the jumps. She's she's making us look, look at her in a different way. She needs and, to just land that triple axle, and the under you know the yeah. jumps that she usually under rotates need to be good, and she'll get a bronze on the Grand Prix or a silver. And uh, I think that she will get some buzz about her. She can even make yeah. the Grand Prix final. Okay. Yeah, I think her reputation has started. It's she's smart to have done all these early things, and it's um, fortunate for her that she was able to go to the Japan Open because this has provided a lot of attention she would have not received otherwise if Gracie had gone, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, let's see what happens with the judges because they're they're iffy on her. So I'll be really intrigued what, what starts happening on the Grand Prix, especially with um, component scores. The so. one I'm getting iffy about, uh, Skater, is I, I still think Ashley is going to the Olympics. I think Mariah is going to the Olympics. And I think you look at the third spot. I thought that Karen Chen was pretty solid and set, but the more times we've seen her, the more questions I'm starting to have about Karen Chen. I think it's fine. I think she's not... I, I just worry about her health. She's been competing a lot for someone that's been injury-prone in the past, and I'm starting to get concerned about... I mean, Karen, who knows, you know, if the injuries will still be a problem, if she'll stay healthy, but I feel like she's starting to make a lot of mistakes, and she's consistently been in the low 100s rather than improving, and you wonder about the training time. I mean, we're really entering the last period of time that the athletes have to really start to ramp up uh, before the Olympics. Right. And it looks like she could use some lessons on the Lutz. It's been bugging her the last few competitions and uh, just, you know, not sure. I, I the, She changed the gloves uh, from last week to this week. They're getting bigger. Stop it, Karen. I wanted them to slowly disappear, not slowly eat your entire arm. <laughs> Jeez Louise. And they have like this, some weird course that and thing, it's completely out of place. You don't like it. It's okay. <laughs> they weren't red before uh, either, so now they're standing out more. And it's not great. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know why Karen or Mariah paid for a choreographer this year. I, I didn't see. Um, look, Sasha and John Nix put together better stuff together than that uh, that we were seeing that looked like yeah. more expensive. Um, yeah. Like okay. Um, I know she's overused, so some of the output is good and some of it is less than inspired, but why wouldn't Karen call someone like Lori? I think Nick, or someone, I, I don't understand it. Like, you're so judged by the people you choose to surround yourselves with, and so her choice of choreographer, I was like, huh, that, that puts you just kind of more in a middle of the road American category than like on the upper echelon of international skaters category to me. I don't know. <clears throat> I think Lori's really expensive. Like, I think she costs more money than, um... Okay, well, if I You get what you pay time... for, honey. <laughs> yeah, I'm... Start a GoFundMe or something. Go sell candy bars or something outside of the grocery store oh and raise God. money to... If Karen did a GoFundMe for choreography, Peter Murray would be all over it. We can... Oh, my God. We could do a GoFundMe choreography for certain skaters so they won't skate to Carmen during the Olympic season. Oh, my God. That would have been genius, Jonathan. <laughs> but, yeah, I just... Um, although oh I... God, say, you know, we can't... pay for Medvedeva to not use uh, Alverbuk? And maybe she could go to, like, Sandra and we could... 
Well, wait. Well, should we just segue right into it? I had a strong feeling because Medvedeva did a different free skate here than we had previously uh, seen. I can't even tell you what the other one was because I don't remember at this point. It didn't make a big impact. Another Averbuch program, so we're glad that we didn't have to see it again. Yeah, and I thought this was much improved. This this program. So there was an article that came out that said he was furious. He thought this was a, an exhibition, but then the federation said no, this is a new free. And then it was suggested she would have two different free programs for the Olympics: one for the team event, one for the individual event. Which, of course, I think is absurd. Um, <clears throat> I much prefer the Anna Karenina, even though it's still maintains that cheesy like crowd sound at the beginning and the choo-choo train leaving goodbye at the end um but i think it's it's much improved overall and there's in the anna in a story there's so much ballroom dancing and so she kind of emulates some of that and it actually kind of like gets her posture up and open and all this kind of stuff so i actually liked it for her yeah i don't know yeah i liked it much more than things we've seen from her in the past that's for sure yeah i'm but i'm for it it was done by uh the cute assistant of atari tuparitsa daniel something with a g i don't even know it, it i danny, danny g danny g we're name. gonna call him danny g he's the one that they sent to the junior <laughs> grand prix with the skaters he yeah. looks like the the, the 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 person that's less scary than Terry or um sergey dudakov who has the um the shaved head who looks like um he may have put the hit out on someone. So what <laughs> What I like about Averbuch is that every season he seems to get mad at another one of these ladies, and it's usually around the time they start um, growing or going through puberty. If you recall, he choreographed um, the program where Medvedeva was deaf and then could suddenly hear and love life. That was originally... What's that? Remember the program? Sorry, that was- that was a bad joke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear. That was originally a Yulia Lipnitskaya program. Oh, yeah, just hand it out. Yeah. Just hand, because it was. <laughs> yes, he he had the idea because, about the deafness and he just needed to get that out there. And then it changed in the Russian fluff piece that it was about Terry's daughter. And then right. suddenly it got connected to the fact that she survived the Oklahoma City bombing and right we did not follow that thread at all well how it was yeah exactly also I don't really know where the YMCA was in relation and whether or it like knocked her over when she was brushing her teeth and I was like well I didn't think that you were inside but you know I yeah. I love a good yeah. Russian fairy tale and I love a Terry everything about her I think she is just fantastic mm-hmm. and horrifying yes. and terrifying at the oh, same time I love they did this, and I hope maybe that Danny G starts mm-hmm. doing this for more people. Because I, cause I he did the Ziggy big... Diva programs, though. Remember, there was that like video of him, but he did that very nice program to the girl we like. For the girl we like, who did one of the quads and then broke her leg and was injured, he did that right. dream catcher music that Tara used at the World Pro back in the day, back in those professional competitions. It was her artistic right. program, and apparently Danny G was a fan as well because he brought that music back for seemingly no reason other than to yeah. give it to Anna Sherbakova. And uh, yeah. however we say her okay. last name, Sherbakova, whatever. Um, but yes, that was um, the reason. So Danny G, I enjoy him as much as um, the cute um, one of ambiguous, um, you know, attraction uh, that used to coach Pogo Relia. He's in New York uh, this week. I saw oh, on Instagram. That, that Victor, Victor, Victor <laughs> Adriano, or so, whatever yeah. his name. Yeah, big fan of him. Mm-hmm. That's a good Instagram handle to follow, by the way. Yeah, okay. yeah, we're going to talk about that in a moment as we get to your Italian friends. Um, okay. So okay. <laughs> I have now, to. Say- Here's an actual question I have about Zagitova because sure. you know we talk endlessly. Okay, she backloads the program. <clears throat> When we talk about stamina, mm-hmm. right, is it impressive if you're doing, to me, what makes a jump harder in the second half is you've been doing jumps yes. in the first half. But if you don't do any jumps in the first half, is it just kind of like an enormous warm up? That's what I would, that's what I take it as. I mean, also, I mean, some people, I guess it works for them. She's very young, but it essentially, defeats the whole purpose it's kind of a loophole in the rules i mean obviously she is doing things but she's doing footwork she's getting warmed up she's getting her knees into the ice 
and then she's yeah, going. it's just for warm up, is it not? Because the difficult what, thing is to do you? so many jumps in succession. I guess that to me is sort of impressive in a sense, but then it completely cuts off the choreography, any sort of storytelling, right. any. I mean, it, to me, it's just a, a terrible uh, way to construct a program because it's. It's a snooze for the first two minutes, and then we are just popping off these jumps uh, in the second that is half. Literally, yeah. yeah. I have to say, her triple lutz, triple loop, though, is so impressive to me. It reminds me of watching Tara do that triple loop, triple loop, where it's just jaw dropping. Um, yeah. And I, I do think that she could be the spoiler of the Olympics if anything happens to Medvedeva. I think that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. She's being groomed as such. Yeah. yeah. She is quite. Um, quite the little competitor uh and i i mean the way the rules are i don't agree with them we live in a universe where they exist um and i think that she unfortunately is checking off all of the boxes in these rules um uh, it's not what i like it's not what i respond to and it's certainly not what i enjoy watching on a weekend by the way um but uh <laughs> Uh, we live under these rules. I I really liked uh, Marin Honda here. I thought that she had some mistakes, but you know what? It was she's not giving us like a Sasha Cohen train wreck performance. I feel like she's handling her new fame, her new her success well. As we go into the Olympics, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't her best, but I think that she's done what you would hope someone to do uh, during the fall, where they kind of get out there do yeah. pretty well, but still leave their best performances for later in the season as we get I, closer. And even from the last time we saw this, she's a little more in command of the program now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She felt a little like more driving the program instead of her like catching up to it, you know, the whole time. Like the first time I saw it, I felt like it was a bit heavy for her mm -hmm. because she almost catching up to the music or, but all, already just having lived with the program for a little bit, she's on top of it. And well, I, she felt more relaxed. Well, I wonder if it's because she almost pulled a Tim Delensky at the U.S. Classic and puked on camera like he did that one time. Did you, at the first... She almost threw up? What do you mean? Remember, didn't you see her at the end of her program? In oh, oh, with her like being dizzy at the end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, maybe it was hard to be in the program during those moments. Fair enough. Fair enough. You, first of all, the dress is exquisite, even mm -hmm. though, I mean, but and there's such three-dimensional qualities to her arm gestures and movements that are, are really nice. Mm -hmm. Just to be that, like, super annoying opera queen just for two seconds. Yes. I'm not a fan when they say the word sleep and she, like, makes a sleeping gesture. And it's not my favorite, though, when literally it's just the instrumental version in the beginning, but in the course of the opera, it's where they're singing like Turandot means death. Turandot makes everything bloody. And she turns around and she does one of her like Katie, Danny and Tosca kind of like big smiles. And she's like, ah, and I was like, oh my God, Marin, anywhere but there, anywhere but there. Just don't. I love your smile and I love her dancing and I love all of this stuff. But I was like, please just don't smile and like the bloody sangue part. That would not be my favorite. I'm kind of impressed that David Wilson, who I think he's full of surprises because you could meet David Wilson and just not know where he is going, but he knew that sleep meant that. I'm kind of impressed. I mean, some of these skaters. Church would have translated that Nessun Dorma has <laughs> the word sleep in it, but that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes it's very evident that I, I don't think Gracie ever saw that movie about the Holocaust with the balloon uh, that Roberto Benigni won the Oscar for. I mean, some of these programs through the years, they have really um, bastardized uh, the interpretation. And Marvel has gone up. Remember, it was not that long ago that Kathy Reed was choreographing her exhibition to flash dance. So from whence we've come. We love Marin, and she's just right on track. Doing great. <laughs> you have to warn me before you name drop names like that and <laughs> flash dance and things, all that I might reveal. Oh, feeling. Feeling. Well, Speaking of feeling state, what about your girl, Mai Mihara? I thought she was very lovely, ethereal. She really copied Alyssa Sisney's dress uh, from a couple of seasons ago. Uh, it looked good. I'm a fan of Alyssa too. I think, I think she's earning her spot to the Olympics, which makes me think that there's one spot open for Japan. And I think that maybe we leave Wakaba home. I, I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah. 
go. Because um, it's clear that they're grooming uh, Marin for great things, yes. and the judges are very eager to respond to it. And so I always kind of thought it was maybe a battle, a showdown between um, Lokaba and Mai. Mm -hmm. And here I was like, okay, this is really game changer kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. uh, Uchi did some good jumps at her event so far, but the program is what it is. But mm -hmm. Mai really, she took it up a step. I still mm -hmm. don't, I'm not floored by it, but I found it an enjoyable watch. Mm -hmm. And I didn't necessarily think that last year, for sure. Yeah, it's much improved. Yeah, last year um, was really difficult uh, to get through. You talk, it was like a Satsgova program where it was endless. It was just yeah, going on and on. And she has these like great edges, but somehow there's a lightness and an effervescence to her footwork and things like that. Yeah, I don't know. I was really pleased. Yeah. And of course, I think it's a statement that she was the one invited, unless mm -hmm. you're. And this also is an IMG connection somehow. I mean, I don't know who Wakaba is with, but that, to me, the fact that the two of them are there, you have to think that they're grooming. I mean, we haven't seen Satoko yet, but I think that Japan is definitely not wanting a uh, repeat of last season in any uh, shape or form where uh, they suddenly only have two ladies. Because I would offer one of the American spots to them right now. I I'm think happy we to only need two spots. Um, I don't yep. see any need for three. Uh, right. Apparently... Uh, Mariah Bell was working on her program at the Air Force Academy and not 100% on the jumps either. So I don't see her really taking uh, Karen's spot at this point. And um, yeah, I, I think that, um, look, we could give Japan our pair spot. We could give them, I'd give them one of the dance spots. I mean, I don't even care. I mean, the dance, we deserve three, but I would give them. No, no, we want three. Yeah, for dance. Do we want three? We could give them one. I mean, look, I could... <laughs> you'd say what well, depends which two ended up going that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> well i don't yeah. want Zachary to like accidentally fall and not go to the olympics so <laughs> yeah there you go <clears throat> how about the men's event i mean here we saw javier again i thought that javi really had the best overall quality of over the of the men he didn't hit all of his quads it's becoming a little bit worrisome that he's had so many mistakes on the quads not because because the other men are going to be throwing down very difficult quads later on in the season, and he's going to need to be consistent because he cannot afford to make those mistakes just because of the, the point tariff on the quad lutzes and the quad flips that some of these other men are, are going to do when they do show up. I do think he has the performance quality to really be in the nines and uh, you know when these men do go head-to-head, -head, but that is a little bit um, problematic. If we compare it to where he normally is at this point in the season, I it's still feel like he's actually ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like he's for for him. Mm -hmm. He is more on track than he has been in other seasons. Yeah, uh, so I well, I feel confident he'll be okay. As far as Shoma Uno making so many mistakes with him, I never know. Is it technique? Is it injury? I mean, he's he was injured over the summer. He had some ankle things. Then he was fine. We've seen him great. We've seen him make tons of mistakes on landings. What do you make of kind of his, where he's at in in his development? I, I just, I never know exactly what to expect from him, except for that it could be a bumpy ride. That's... And often is, but in this way, it was almost a bumpy ride in a different way than I'm used to. Normally, he just doesn't check and he does that crazy swirl mm -hmm. around. And this, this was a little bit different than that. And the performance really went out of him. Mm -hmm. This time, I'm not used to seeing. Yeah. Um, he was you know, resign for the rest of the program to just kind of let it go. I imagine um, he probably did want to obviously defeat Javier here, uh, to defeat Javi and uh, definitely make a statement. It didn't happen. Yeah. Also going against Nathan. I mean, this is pretty sizable competition. Uh, with Hanyu not here. This, this is the competition minus Hanyu. You yeah. know, like, I mean, maybe Patrick, but, you know. But not. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, but like these, these were the guys. You yeah. know, this might as well have been his Olympics, and yeah, yeah. it was interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. Uh, Nathan Chen here. It's interesting to me that the one jump he kind of talked about not training in the past, the quad loop with the hip problems, that has been his best, best. jump. Yeah. I mean, he did two of the most gorgeous jumps I think we've ever seen in the last two competitions, and then kind of had problems but again with him last year he was really kind of messy at this point in the season and i think we forget that with how strong he got 
by the Grand Prix right. Final and Nationals, but he was really not spectacular uh, during the Senior B portion. Even during his first Grand Prix last year, he still had some uneven moments. So I'm really um, looking forward to when he gets costumes. I'm uh, looking forward, but I think that I really like the footwork uh, sequence. I love the quad loop, and I think the other jumps are coming. I, I do think that he will get himself. I think that he's a very determined, mentally strong person who doesn't seem intimidated by the Olympic season as much as he seems probably a little bit intimidated by the content he's going for and that he has a big job to do every time he gets out there on the ice to be competitive. It's certainly, um, gosh, do you remember? It was like when Boyang Jin first came on the scene with the Lutz, mm -hmm. the quad Lutz, like mind blown. And now it's like, well, yeah, everyone has flip and a loop and a lot it's like yeah. it took that quickly for us to just completely become normalized with that content and it's yeah. like, like it's epic but he's so mentally strong like after he had one of the quad landings with shaky he just took his time mm-hmm. and then launched the combo yeah. like it, it's it's pretty impressive and i do, do love the step sequence mm-hmm. i just i think his skating you know, is improving yeah, this, this, and again, because I'm a sucker, I think you make so much of an impression in those first few moments, and he does a very good job at, at weaving a, a, a web of artistry in the first few moments. But his air position looked a little more, when you see beautiful quads, you have mm. to tell me this, <clears throat> do you like it to go up and over? His were a little bit, like, almost that this Sometimes time. Sometimes the Raphael angling in general can be a kind of a wild ride. I mean, Adam's triple axle, some, yeah. But then when we see Nathan at his best last year, the quad had a really, the quad Lutz was a really great look. It's interesting that he's been doing the quad toe and the quad sal for longer, but they look to be kind of shakier jumps uh, this season. Maybe yeah. he spent more time on the other ones because they are the important point getters, but it looks like he needs to kind of... Habits or something like the loop maybe he doesn't have any habits so he's learning it all with new like focus great technique yeah. or something so yeah and it's it looks like he could also be rather exhausted he made a comment after the last grand prix how he has to get his body kind of in the physical shape to do all of those quads in uh one program so i think that that is another thing here i mean he's doing so many quadruple jumps in a free skate just to get the stamina for that probably does take uh quite some time especially when you're under pressure and everything feels different and uh more tiring and perhaps tight or just out out of sorts uh especially in an olympic season but you know what he looks like he's putting the content out getting through it um i think we'll we'll know with him by you know by the first or second grand prix kind of which which way this season is going to go for him uh what kind of trajectory he's on i i don't feel confident about him and i don't feel not confident about him. I, I think it's too early to tell how he's really going to stack up against the Hanyus, against um, Shoma Uno, against Javier, because we we don't know. We've seen him give kind of uneven performances uh, so far. And he was obviously disappointed. Yep. Um, he dropped quite the F-bomb and quite the gif right after the skate, which I'd loved. So, <laughs> yeah, I uh, <laughs> mad props to him. I was uh, appreciative of that. Let's talk about Finlandia, because this was the other event going on this season. Um, you know what? While we're, while we're on the men, let's just talk about the men at Finlandia, Jonathan, if that is okay. Um, yep. What did you make of the bird? Because we talk about three spots, and let's just talk about it. I think Nathan is going to the Olympic Games. Yeah, yeah correct. So then the other two spots, who are right. the judges going to send? Because you have to think that these men compete a lot they compete against each other a lot and also national judging tends to reflect reputation that's built into you know among before right. you gotta think jason brown we talked about how Corey and he are angling and we talked about him at labardia if he's healthy are he and adam competing for the same spot on the olympics is i i do put vincent in a separate category uh where Vincent is developing the very difficult quad jumps. He doesn't have the artistry of the other two, but he is certainly going out there and putting the content down. And he won the free skate at Finlandia. He did, you know, he had problems in the short, but I, I have to think it was a pretty significant that he defeated Adam here. I think that that sets an interesting precedence as we go ahead in the season. I have two thoughts. Mm-hmm. Well, I have 
on this particular subject, I have to. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if I had to say right now, I feel like Jason's spot is a, a little more solidified, and it's Adam and Vincent kind of mm -hmm. going after that third spot. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, I think the, U, uh, the United States needs to just watch the results mm -hmm. of the Grand Prix, and mm -hmm. it will become clear. The thing is, the judges aren't interested in helping Vincent, mm -hmm. internationally or nationally. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, Adam's kind of a mixed bag, but internationally they do give Jason the PCS. Mm -hmm. So I think it, the PCS scores of the judges internationally will really tell the tale on probably who they said. I mean, right. there's just not much to Vincent's program, but actually the one thing I notice is if you go and just watch the actual basic skating, even though Vincent's program is a snooze, his actual mm -hmm. basic skating is better than Adam's. And that is the one thing, because we think of Adam as this Jeremy Abbott type, but he's kind of like that artist without the skating skills to back it up, that kind of go along with it. His crossovers are really poor. It's why they still is the jerky quality to Adam. And they kind of emphasize it in the Beatles program, but you can really tell when these men go up against each other and you watch them, it's almost like you're wa he's walking in place and you see the back going. Uh, and well, the, the run it, of the edge is not there, in and out of the elements. Who was the person saying like, oh, the skating coat, you work from the blade up or like that whole like, it Elvis comes Strico. from the- Yes. Oh, oh gosh, <laughs> well then forget it. But the idea that skating is from mm. the blade up, um, to me, Adam is artistic from the waist up. Mm -hmm. He's selling the face, he has nice arm gestures, He does. he's committed to the choreography, things like that. From the waist down is where it's clear that the the edges and the things are not as are not the same quality as mm -hmm. you know he's been pegged as this artist type but his edges are not like jeremy's they are not like jason's mm -hmm. you know this sort of thing his spins are great yeah. great spins, and a great commitment and upper body great right. spins he's competing against jason who's like gumby and adam has to work hard and it could just be the difference of a point or two there I think when you compare him to Vincent, he obviously has the edge. But I think if Vincent does land the quads, they will certainly send him, especially if he lands the quads at Nationals. I think it would be really hard to... Oh, okay. See, I wondered if the, if we would just be stubborn and put forth Adam over Vincent, because I don't know. I The one thing that I would think of is, don't you think that if you were the USFS, I would feel tired of these Phil Hirsch articles about how we are not investing in the boys with the quads, how we are not sending right. them out. And I almost wonder, look, there's going to be an uproar about this decision either way. Because, yeah. because Adam and Jason have a ton of fans, especially mm -hmm. the women who come to skating year after year after year. And then Vincent has the quads, which there's also the school of thought to support the quads, support the development, support the future. They could always split it and send one of them to Worlds and the other to uh, to the Olympics. But I tend to think that Vincent is tracking here to perhaps make the Olympic team. Uh, I think, but he has to stay it's healthy. Vincent's goal, yeah, absolutely. And I think the tale will be told. I bet I would be surprised if mm -hmm. the t if between Jason, Adam, and Vincent, mm -hmm. I think whoever are the top two on the Grand Prix. Those will be the two that... I also have to think with Adam, as much as I enjoy his personality and find him engaging, I think he's got a nice body line about him, and I, I do like his music choices, he's doing the same programs as last year, and if you're kind of going for that fan favorite, I don't have a quad, the people love me, I'm an artist vibe, wouldn't you probably give them something new? I, I To me, that's... We've seen certain, I mean, the short, the music was dated when he picked it. I don't think that that's great. I could understand wanting to keep the free skate. He only did it a couple of times last year. I would, why did we waste time on the Rihanna program that he was going to sing to that sounded ridiculous and then not use it? it to me, it's just, um, I mean, I was curious to see it, not for any positive reasons. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I just wonder, you know, what is being fed to some of these skaters? To me, I think that he could have, you know, he's friends with Benji Schwimmer and there are so many people that support him that even if he didn't have an idea for music, there could be someone else with a great idea for him. He has a great aesthetic. 
And I would think that he would want to be creative in that sense, in a way that Vincent the, can't be. The Bird program is creative, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's your cup of tea or not. But I think that resonates with his soul much mm -hmm. more than this put on campy club vibe. Well, he's going you know, for that, too. I mean, he really has been gunning that vibe the last few seasons, and it's... It doesn't ring true, though. He comes alive in a different way to the Birds program that seems much more genuine and heartfelt than... And mature. ...put on. Yeah. He's yeah. capable of being far more sophisticated and feeling and sincere than Ashley, and I think that... I think that the short is almost at her level, and the free is an elevated program uh, that we've yeah. seen from him in the past. And he has the ability to, I just think he's capable of more with the show. I mean, he got good components. He's engaging, you know, it's what matters, but you just wonder, you know, strategically if that was a. It's okay to be soft. Yeah. And I feel like a softer short program would help him. You know, I hear that, that club music and it just puts me right back to like a smoky bar when I'm in college. I like, mm -hmm. I immediately suck in my stomach because that's what I associate with clubs. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just feel like something lyrical in the same way with Karen Chen. Mm -hmm. Be the loon, be the bird, be, do something soft and own it because that's that's who he is as a skater, I believe. Yeah, it's interesting. And the yeah. music that I had selected to Karen, I actually spoke to her about it. And um, I really thought the, that she should have used the Albinoni piece that Jeremy used for his short the year that he won the Grand Prix Final. Mm -hmm. To me, that would have been like a good, softer Karen that still there's some meat to the music. So, Absolutely. yeah, I'm not sure there. As for Bo Yang Jin, I liked his short more than I usually like his skating. Um, I kind of really liked the short. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was all in. And that's a Lori thing, I'm assuming. And mm -hmm. so I, props to her. Like, I thought, again, Opening movements, mm -hmm. opening movements where in Adam short, he does those opening like, you know, popped poses that he barely has under control. He, it almost seems like he misses it. And all, mm -hmm. the, all of a sudden I'm nervous and it seems shaky. But in Boyan Jin's opening segments, I was like, oh, look, he's finishing the arm movement. He's thinking about mm -hmm. it. He's trying. Um, a lot of people like the, the planet Star Wars free of his. That wasn't so so much a hit for it me. It was that but... Jeremy program we never got to see. He only did it at that Skate Detroit, remember? Uh... Right, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, to me, he does a gorgeous quad lutz. We saw it in the beginning. When he does, I mean, talk about a gorgeous jump. That is fantastic. I could have really done without the rest. To me, it's just not as engaging. But the opening movement's there, and he's been a spoiler before. You know, we don't consider him because he doesn't have the artistry, but he's someone that's been a spoiler. Right. Every time he does it, all he can do is be better than he was before. And he is always a little better than he was before. Mm -hmm. He's still, you know, no amazing artist. But same thing, when he first started coming on with those quad lutzes, and it was, like, mind-blowing, it's like sometimes if you go on vacation to Europe, right? And you're like, it's on day five, and you're like, oh, look, another masterpiece. Oh, look, another, like, ancient cathedral that's exquisite. All right, can we go to lunch now? You know, <laughs> it's just like you've almost become numb to how Olympic, like, Olympian, actually it is Olympian, <laughs> how difficult these things are, mm -hmm. and they just completely become normal now. All it, those it just, churches in Europe, Jonathan, I mean, come on, how many are we going to go to? You know? Once you've seen one famous stained glass window and one famous dead poet in a thing, you're like, all right, now, let's go to the next place. <laughs> let's go to Europe, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I mean, how many churches are we really going to go to? I, this is just... Exactly. Take me to church. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of love for Lori Nickel, I was really feeling Pong and Jin. So apparently you talk about how um, this is the old daughter, the old man in light blue that they got together. Uh, uh, Other than Sway and Han, because the, people say Sui and Han, but it's apparently it's Sway and Han according to Skating Protocol, and I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly, but... Um, Pong and Jin are, to me, they look so much like a pair this season. They were matching so well. It looked like they elaborated on the, sh the vibe of the short and the chemistry between them that they had doing uh, the Squirrel Nut Zippers My Drag piece uh, last year in the short, and that they used it, but in the Bond tango, uh, the Assassin's tango. And I really liked the program. I liked her in red. I liked the choreography. I really just, I responded very well to this program. 
I want to put them on a world or Olympic podium with this program in a way that I thought it was far superior to the Russians. Um, I thought it was superior to Aliona. And I really feel like this is a team that has... It was, more cohesive. It was a cohesive team yeah. that even the side side jumps and like in so many things, and I'm going to say this a couple times with all these pairs, when we keep seeing two single skaters together mm-hmm. and the, the, when they do the same arm gestures and they're completely not in sync. This team but was they are matching so like a Moskvina yeah. team or like one of the Zhuk teams from Russia. I mean, they were really matching and I really thought they looked like vintage Shen and Zhao, vintage yeah. Pang and Tong. I mean, they were really performing well. He had a it's hysterical the, fall. I, I thought the, the short was the best. Yes. I preferred the short over the long. Yeah. The, the long, long was, I do. I think know, the long is very nice. Um, he had a hysterical fall. I mean, if you've ever skated and just like you almost have it and then you fall and like you, the way he fell was just one of those, like you get up and you're like, why did that happen? Yeah, I, that is, um, <laughs> uh, no. yeah. and they really had, um, the, I, I think that they look really strong. I think that they could be one of those spoiler teams uh, for this season. The Chinese always seem to pull it out at the Olympics too. Uh, they seem to really know how to peak uh, the performance it's level. A really interesting move. Mm-hmm. You know, unique lifts, unique holds, like unique moments that were just different. And it was just so appreciated. Yeah, apparently Lori uh, went to China over the summer and spent some time there. I think that you can really tell that... He has the clientele for it, so... There was some real there was some real effort put into that choreography, unlike uh, some of the Americans where they're repeating programs. I mean, this, they really... Where you live right near Lori Nichol. Yes. I like Lori and Pierre's. You know, and Lori's one of those, she's overused, so some are hit and some are missed. But <clears throat> I like stuff, Lori in general. I, now that every lady in the U.S. is not going there, getting the same kind of program, I really uh, appreciate when a skater spends time with Lori, when they listen to her, when she can be creative. Um, she's coming up with something for them. Yeah. I think when yeah. Lori was starting to get criticized during the later Michelle Kwan years, you know, there was a lot of pressure on Michelle. She was very famous. She was very busy. And she always had to win. And I think that when you have to win and you feel like, well, the judges like me doing this, you're less willing to take risks. And sometimes the risks don't pay off. And I think that there... It's about a not a goal to create art. Yeah, yeah. it's about... Yeah, and I, I think, you know, with someone like Carolina, or the, she... Carolina's always meddling, but she's not always... Uh, winning you know and i think what she's winning in, yeah where she's able to kind of and she's willing to take these choreographic risks and i think that it's really paid Make, off yeah um but i have to say this okay so luba and dylan we finally see them i read an article i know people are gonna judge jonathan yes. i love the short program i don't I care no. I think it's almost voidy. I really respond to it. I think that she looks like heaven. I, just skating the wind in the hair. Well, I, her positions are exquisite. Like, I oh don't my. care that that triple toe wasn't even close. I would put her first at Canadian Nationals for that performance, okay? I don't okay. care if Duhamel and Radford skate clean. I thought that they look fantastic. with the da- Okay, so David Wilson and Marie France did the short... Sandra and David did the free. Now, we're praying for a better costume situation in the free, and apparently Sandra... Yeah, it's really an unusual choice. So I talked to Sandra about it, and about the free. She wanted him in jeans, which to me makes me think, oh, Sandra's giving us like a Barb and Paul moment. If, if you... I was just going to say that 100% that's what I thought about that entire free. I was like, this is so like a pro competition with Barb and Paul. So, okay. okay. Apparently, she said that they joked that it was like the relationship the team had last year, a year later, like a year in development, and that they're sitting at a bar together, and that he wants to keep the relationship going, but she's moved on, but then she flirtatiously kind of toys with him that maybe she's not done. I'm like, this is like classic Sandra sex on ice with the jeans, but um, it did have that, a little bit of that element of like a stars on ice number instead of an Olympic number. I'm, that was all I. Was. 
I'm for it. I'm for their lifts. Okay. I like their carry lift. I think she looks amazing. I'm so sick of these IJS programs that I will take a Stars on Ice program over yep. an Olympic program any day. Um, I like the Michael J. Fox angle. I think that we need to all watch that episode about this song so that people can get that reference. I think okay. that people need to know who Michael J. Fox is who are watching skating and they need to understand family ties. And they need to show me that smile again. Yeah. Show me that <laughs> smile again. Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> it does surprise me about them. Um, <clears throat> I'm surprised they don't have a better twist. Yeah. They strike me as one of the teams that should have an Alexa Chris, uh, Eleona Bruno kind of like outrageously high twist. Instead, mm-hmm. they have an okay twist. But they, something about them strikes me as they should have like a super wow factor twist. They but, do have wow factor some... elements. I thought that the free was really uneven. I thought it looked not quite cohesive. I mean, I know that the jumps are always dicey, but... Yeah. But one thing that I liked about the program that responded well is that there are moments where he's doing choreography and she's doing different choreography and they're kind of circling each other on the ice and it was Mm -hmm. like actual interesting choreographic moments and I forgot that that existed in this sport. And I really thought that it was creative and different and... I liked it. I have to say it was a much different from all of the schlock that we have seen. I have to tell you, when we were watching those yeah. programs last week, I wanted to gouge my eyes out. I thought that they were terrible. I didn't like them. I thought I yeah. think it's been a really hard season to watch every week uh, going through. It's I've not been excited about well, much of it. It's interesting when we go back because like the things in Finland or Japan, we're not watching them live. So mm. we go back and watch them on YouTube. <clears throat> and some I'm curious and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see this. And some, it almost feels like a chore. Mm-hmm. And I love skating, but some of these programs, I was like, I have to watch so-and-so now and mm-hmm. watch the whole thing, you know? And yeah, so that you're right in that it was uniquely their own. Mm-hmm. And it was, it said something. Yeah. Whether you like and it just it. made us laugh and wistful for... Um, Nostalgic the, for the 80s. I <laughs> for, really think that, I think that the Canadians have this vibe. It's like 1993... You know, they are in a bar downtown. <laughs> and it just, like, it's coming on that soft rock radio. It's on the WPLJ. Yeah. It's like stonewashed jeans with a white t-shirt on. We know exactly what this is. Yeah. Yes. They're, they're skating to pill columns, for goodness sakes. <laughs> like, God. Um, although, Would you rather they skate to, like, a cover of U2? I mean, that is what, yeah, exactly. This fair enough. Is... Fair enough. Mm-hmm. The only thing will say, Dylan, I think you're very handsome. Please stop man spreading in the kiss and cry. No one had any room to sit. Like poor Luba and then the guy they were like this on the edge of the couch and he was just like <laughs> they have all those signs on the New York subway now. They're like, stop man spreading and he was hundred percent doing it in the kiss and cry. Goodbye. <laughs> Speaking of kiss and cry moments, I think one of my favorites, maybe of all time, mm-hmm. you have my husband, Jim Peterson looking very intense because it's an Olympic season. He's got one spot and he has one team that's injured and another one that's new and he has to get them ready. Right. And he has Deanna and Nate and Nate is apparently very competitive and wants to go to the Olympics again. Yeah. And he's that skater that went to the Olympics. You know, he is like the determined driven one. He had an air about him that was, I found a little upsetting this competition. Well, they've... there's been an awkwardness between them a couple of competitions now. They Obviously, they haven't skated particularly well, especially sometimes in the short from competition to competition. But that was worth re-watching. That, that, first of all... And the was just loud enough so you could kind of hear, but not quite. And them, him complaining about something about the six-minute warm-up and Jim just shutting them right down. And Deanna just with, like dead eyes like just looking forward and her silence was deafening mm-hmm. it was I, I don't know what is happening there but I was like Deanna doesn't have to do this Mm-mm. she could call the quits at any minute Nate so you better just keep yourself in check because she could just walk she can walk and be given Botox to those ladies in Chicago I mean those women always need to look good and the lighting for her yeah or me I'm gonna give her a call next but uh Like, she doesn't have to do this. This is literally a labor of love for her to come back. So if you're not making it pleasant... When do you think it's too early to get Botox? Before the Olympics? How much... How early? How long does it last? If we got it now, would it last until the Olympics? 
Oh, no, I think it only lasts like a couple months, right? Okay. I don't know. Depends how deep you go. <laughs> do you have to peak with Botox, like training for the Olympics? Like you don't want to do it too early, right? You want to... I think you don't want to do it too close to the Olympics also because you don't want to seem like you can't express. Yes. You want to be able to emote with those lines. Yeah. We should ask Dia. She probably knows all about it. I, um, professional standpoint. but I think that maybe we should get Jim some so that he could... Um, look a little bit happier um maybe if we uh jim i could make you happy call me yeah I'm single. <laughs> jim you had teams go to the olympics why do you want to go again it's such a long flight you know yeah who wants to go to korea me <laughs> okay <laughs> look it's very trump is getting very aggressive with korea i want to stay away from there right now okay it is just look I... okay <laughs> speaking but here's the of thing. korea here's... yeah do you think maybe that they could bring out the Quan in Korea with Yuna doing one of those duets? Because we know that Yuna doesn't want to skate, according to like everyone who's ever worked with her. But yeah. maybe is she going to have like, this was my inspiration for skating. I mean, did you see Michelle's double axel this week? It was better than many she did competitively. So there are rumors about like what this could all be for or anything. I think we, we may have to go go fund me the Danny Kwan Christmas show. I think that that could be a oh. thing. Yeah. I'd there. be in the front. I don't care if there are five-year-old girls falling on waltz jumps. Like, if look, if that's what we have to do to support Danny's rank, I will be there. Okay. Exactly. I'll try the Zamponi. <laughs> it's no problem. <laughs> look, and her double cow cow looks pretty good, too. That double axle, though, was looking really better than Ashley's, better than Paulina's. I think she's in better shape than any of the American ladies other than Mariah at this point. So I think that, um, good. I think Michelle's looking good for that third spot uh, on the U.S. team. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, she's taking it year to year. She is yeah. not retired yet. Okay. Um, I have written down hot Italian. Jonathan, talk about your man. Talk about... Matteo. Okay, um... If you do a nice Google image search, or if there's that cheeky Tumblr called Men of FS, men, there's like weird dashes and stuff, that it's just a thirsty Tumblr of attractive men and skating. Skating um, men looking for attention. So we, what's on there? Yeah. I think we have the Jeremy Champagne photo, the Eric Radford in red brief photo. Um, which other ones have we seen? Um, Adam oh, Rapon. Anything by Tim Leduc. Oh like, my God. Did you see yeah. where... Adam, like they did, they did superlatives, and Adam was considered most mar most modest. And like some friend of Adam's texted me, being like, "You mean most narcissistic Instagram?" I mean, that was yeah. amazing. How could it be modest? He's, he's not supposed to be modest. You know what I mean? It would Look, not be a quality. I if I had that waist size, I wouldn't be modest either. I, my Instagram would be thirsty like all hell. Okay? Uh, exactly. That body, if you got it, flaunt it. So more yeah. power to. <laughs> I think there's. I hope Guillaume is coming from the cloud and Mateo. I mean, this is cloud amazing. There are some like very avant-garde photos of him that are worth lo looking up. Yeah. Oh, and also since it's the theme of this pairs event, they now make something on Amazon called the Clip In Man Bun. So you can buy a man bun like that you just attach because everybody he had it, um, uh, Fedor had it, like everyone has it. So. Fedor. There you go. How about Fedor saying that they were right on schedule after he and Stolbova, that lift fall. They have had some of the greatest crashes of all time. Almost Pogo Relia level. I mean, they are really... But, no, theirs are actually like, he's trying to stop. He just couldn't. But So then there's that article that came out where he was like, their first botch lift, mm -hmm. he was like, was our error. Mm -hmm. But then the rest, he was saying that, like, the lace came undone, which is why after he literally belly flopped after aborting the other left, he actually took the time and stopped to just relace it because he knew if they had stopped the program, the penalty for stopping would have been greater than them just leaving out some choreography. I don't know. I really liked the short. And when you're actually... tanking that badly, just take the deduction. You're obviously not going to be doing very well at this competition. Uh <laughs> Well, so that's why he was like, oh, whatever, we'll just keep going. I'm just going to stop for a second and retie it instead of making it a whole thing. You know, Nancy wants like to... Like when the... Did you see this? It was in one of the other team... During the men's event in the Kiss and Cry, the fire alarm went off and everyone had to evacuate. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty funny. Okay. <clears throat> Amazing. Yes, that's... Yeah. I, mean... I like. I liked their programs. 
She you didn't makes care. a Carmen. You know, unlike Karen Chen, when I hear that uh, Stobova is going to be Carmen, I'm like, well. Right on. Yes. That's exactly what she's going to be doing. And you know what was kind of hard, like, warmed my heart a little was when he took that dive after he, like, clearly was like, are you like placed her down to make sure she was okay. She like put her hand like on her heart or her mouth or something to be like, Oh my gosh, are you okay? Instead of that icy mm. European version of Stolbova where she was like, whatever. <laughs> She's humanizing herself to the audience. It's very, very nice. They've had so many injuries that it feels like when have they had consistent training in the last two, two and a half years? It's just been one thing after another. I think it. It's so Goofy twist problems here too. I was problems I, I didn't know you could have on a twist. It was. They and did you know? Here's, here's a fun fact, Dave. Did you know Finlandia had no pairs competition from 2008 to 2015? Well, I did notice that because I went on the Wikipedia and I was <laughs> looking. <laughs> did you know that Karen Kwan competed the Olympic season when when Michelle got all those sixes? That was like her. She had a Paulina Edmonds moment at Finlandia that year and then, like, didn't compete the rest of the season. Oh. Yes. Don't know, but I think that if, you know, if there was YouTube back in the day, that would be one worth watching. I didn't know that Karen competed. It was yeah. one of those where you finished, like, lower than your actual placement in each post. Like, you finished 10th and 11th, but finished 9th overall. One of those uh, glorious finishes. Yeah. Yeah. And this was before we were all streaming it live. You could you could secretly do competitions like Finland. In my mind, no one... I always thought that Karen just retired after '97 and just enjoyed. I so. Yeah, I didn't know that she went to Finland. Hmm. I mean, if it weren't for YouTube, many of us would think that Paulina Edmonds just retired after the Nationals in 2016, and they wouldn't know that she came back. Correct. I'm. We're going to get there. We're going to get to a whole Paulina section. I mean, who else do we have to go to, or do we just want to go right into well, Paulina? The Italians won, and what I'll say is the Italians, because now they're working with Nina. Yes. Uh, I'm glad they were We knew that they were working with Nina, because again, talking about the men of FS, we saw the four men, were they on a wakeboard? What were they on this summer? They were on like, like a floating raft in the middle of a lake with their bums out. Yes. It was, it was, it was yeah. I liked it. On, it was on one of my moments of summer. Uh, you know, you talk about 17 moments of spring. That That's one of them right there. That was a good moment. <laughs> <laughs> but what I, I, again, I'll say, like, they're very individualistic. They don't really always skate as a team, but they, they, they do some cool But they've cool been beating but, Valentina uh, and Andre for quite some time now, yeah, consistently. But, but, Nate, their lifts are so fast. They had some really, they maintained a very, very impressive speed, and that was nice to see. Yeah. But, I have one. All right, so let's go into Paulina. Let's just... Uh, yes. <laughs> I also enjoyed some of the comments that people were leaving on social media where they were like the delusional fan comments who were making all sorts of like, um, she looks um, she looks more mature and she had a wonderful edge quality. Um, Jonathan. Dave. <laughs> Jonathan. Dave. You're going to hate me so much. And I'm owning it because count, like point, counterpoint is yes. kind of a fun game. I have not abandoned all hope yet. I, because, because she's so talented or the other ladies are such disasters. Yes and yes. I think, remember, it wasn't too long ago that we saw her only doing singles. That's true. So the, she, this was a terrible showing. It was a terrible showing. It was embarrassing. It was everything was a disaster. Everything was under call. Everything was under rotated. She was falling. It was 14th or something like that in Finlandia, not the way you wanted to start. However, I mean, the worst that we ever thought was Mariah Bell when she was 13th at that, that other competition a couple of years ago. That was rough. But this was. But. But the difference there is Mariah had been consistently training. Paulina coming back kind of almost out of nowhere <clears throat> to see she's gone from all singles to now she has a couple triples. I don't know why she was trying the lutz and the flip. And I admire her for going because she knows she needs the kick in the butt. That's true. Like they were laughing a little bit at the score in the short program because which to me means they're like, yeah, that's what we expected. We're just like on a journey. So whether or not that journey results in an Olympic trip, which – I do not believe it will. I still believe that by nationals, 
it will be a remarkable story from where she came at this competition to here. I'm just intrigued to see how, how she gets those jumps back, if for no other reason than just curious about how one would get those jumps back in their arsenal. Well, okay. It'll be a fact. I don't well, think she'll be a factor. I look forward to seeing it incrementally improve. It's I fun. agree with you because I've spent time thinking about this, um, that I do think that she can improve for nationals, but I don't think she could keep improving if she's doing what she's doing. Because there was an article about her schedule that was on the ICE Network uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, and it was talking about how she skates like two sessions, and in the morning she goes to all of her classes, and she does like one stretching class, She's not working as hard as the other girls. And yeah. while she looks great in real life, in skating terms, she needs to really improve the strength to weight ratio. She is not rotating those jumps. She's always been slow twitch. She has to be in a very specific strength to weight but ratio. She was already a different shape to me competing here than she was when she was doing all the singles. Well, she would have to be, Jonathan. I mean, yes. Well, well, I feel like it will only continue. I think she's smarter than a lot of people give her credit. And again, do I think she's going to be a factor? No. But well, at least I'm she's just... mentally strong enough to to yeah. put up with the Olympics, which yeah. I don't know if Karen always is or if some of the other ladies always are. I think that if she sets her mind to it, but I really think that if she if she's serious about this, I think she needs to drop her classes um for the rest this of the semester. This has to be all in situation. You have to be all in. Everyone else is all in. You have to be all in. You can't be trying to go to school. And, and it's okay if you don't want to be all in. You don't have okay to be all don't. in. If that's your goal, you have to be all in. And I just think that your focus should be on there, not on the sorority mixer that you were posting on Instagram about last weekend, about the new, uh, your new little, and that's just like yeah, not reason i like her i like her i like that she just like does her but i think that she needs to focus at this point we need to focus for a couple of months we need to go to an extra hot yoga class every day or every other day um yeah. skate an extra session a day and even if like that is she, just... she looks seven feet tall on yes. that ice. it is incredible i was like Who's this giant? I was like this WNBA lady coming out here in her grape jumpsuit. Like, but if what? you want to tell us that you're that you think that you're a skater like Carolina Costner, you need to book it across the ice, Paulina. You need to develop some speed. We need to be working on it because you've always been kind of slow, and we need to. I mean, you're very light and ethereal when you skate, and you have a very nice quality to you. But you need to have the Carolina speed and the flow and the really moving it across the ice because the taller you get the smaller your skating looks and i think that she needs to spend some time getting her butt kicked into gear and to really be moving it you know it looks like we've seen her on instagram land the flip in the lutz but it looks like under the pressure but of comp recently, i think that these were jumps that i felt like she knew she probably wasn't gonna land yeah i mean you could land it but then consistently delivering something that you could do it in competition is different so i think that's going to be the next one I don't know anything that she could attack or triple to at this point. So I think that that's the next one. I mean, certainly in the short program, that combination was, um, you know, interesting. But in her trajectory, I didn't expect she could have even done that. That's true. Like, to me, it was a personal triumph. <laughs> <laughs> the big picture compared to her competitors, but I was like, I'm, I was surprised she pulled that out. The even one thing that I think is unintentionally hilarious is... You know when the ISU shows the replays and they're, um, you know, they show you falling when you fall in and they always like, somehow they find a section of your music and I don't know where, because it's not like from the beginning. Like, I'm very curious how this all happens. And you oh, know they how, time it out just right, yeah. Uh, right, and they time it over the music. There's probably like a time of the replays that like we have not figured out yet. And it's like, time to say goodbye. And she's like, falling on her rear end like again and again and i'm like touche i mean it's, that is it's a 30 rock montage <laughs> yes like, oh my goodness yeah it's oh pretty... dear I, I, a poor choice you know it's like when mm -hmm. mariah skates to the winner takes it all and she's fourth you know it's just like one of those moments where you're like oh yeah. dear yeah. that was so i think we need to do some hot more hot yoga paulina because you look hotter in the sorority if you have your full skating body back, like your Olympic skating body. 
The Olympic skating body is different than the normal body. You need to look like you're with Michelle Kwan. Well, it's not a body that can be attained by she, not being so a full So you know what Michelle Kwan athlete. has right now? Because I've heard a rumor that you are currently single. And I believe that you and Michelle currently well, have... Rumor. I think that you <laughs> currently have the divorce revenge body going on. You know where like you keep getting thinner and more toned and you're like... And you're looking younger, and you're like, what's going on? And I really... You'll see me land the ugliest single axle you've ever seen. <laughs> I am waiting That's for you to... That's what I can provide, yeah, okay. I'm waiting for you to start, like, jumping on Instagram like Paulina and sure. Michelle. Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm gonna, I'll release a series of bunny hops this week. <laughs> okay. All right. I half, half flip or whatever you're doing, one of those early tests. Good, good. Okay, good, because I'm all in for it. That is... Okay. Um, okay. Um, the other ladies at Finlandia, I have to say, I didn't care much about. Um, other, oh no, Carolina competed here, so I cared very much about that. I think that Maria Sutskova, as sleepy of a skater as she is, and Claire de Lune for a sleepy skater, decent choice. Um, emphasize. I, I, I always gave her more credit than everyone else. Okay. Um, but I liked it. She yeah. seemed more mature. She had, now she does. <laughs> It's your heritage. You know, it's like when you watch those animal shows and you're like, how does the baby penguin know it's supposed to blah, blah, blah. It's like something in her Russian genes. She just inevitably knew she had to put her hand above it. But she has that ponytail. Mm. So randomly when the ponytail is whipping up in the air during the jump and her hand is there, I can't, it's just kind of a blur of, I don't know what. And it was literally like on every jump, I think. But I actually kind of enjoy her skating. <laughs> I think she's getting the third spot. I think she's I, going to the Olympics. Yeah. She's going with uh, a Terry's Girls. That will be the team. I think she's put the results, in, she's gotten the results, and I think that um, she looks... I, Jonathan, I forgot that she existed over the summer. You know, like, when you've taken time off and, like, someone just, like, really didn't resonate with you? Like, oh, yeah, she exists. That's oh, right. Because I was like, who are they going to send? Is Renia Nova going to go to the Olympics? Poker Alaya, I don't know if she's, you know, still skating. What's going on? And... I forgot that Satskova existed, okay? That is... Well, I always knew because I just called her, like, the Russian Paulina, <laughs> like, with better results, but, like... So maybe they're both getting the Paulina spot to the Olympics. I mean, I didn't know you were such a Paulina fan. Um, always. Personal. Yeah. <laughs> I like that we got to see the mom in the kiss and cry. I would have loved to have seen Christy Ness, but I think that... You know, she was traveling to Finland. I mean, yeah. it looked nice. We got to see all those pictures of everyone outside the arena during uh, the, the, uh, fire. the fire drill. <laughs> so I, I was uh, all for it. Yeah, that was um, mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. a good one. Um, so I have to tell you, I'm sure that you make fun of Celine Dion and think that she's schlocky, whatever. I loved Carolina Costner skating to uh, No Me Quite Pa in the short. I thought it was the moment. Oh my yes, okay. I still, you know, because I have to be that music mm -hmm. jerk. I'm gonna say I wish it was the Jacques Brel version that she was doing because I think his is like more a little bit more powerful. But it was, I think it's lovely. I think she, it's still a little slow. And in the short, I don't know why she doesn't do the triple toe, triple toe. Well, yeah, I think that they're they're hoping for the flip toe. Obviously, that is the planned <laughs> combo. <laughs> She did the flip toe. She was still, she waited till the Olympics to pull that out. She was triple toe, triple toe the rest of the time. I was she's just, not young anymore. You know, we may have to practice these. We don't just like bust out the, the honeymoon moves early. You know, we have to. But it was an interesting because most of the people in the short were doing triple toe, triple toe here. I know. Gabby. Um, oh, Gabby. Leonova. Uh, Tuktamishva, like they were all triple toe, triple toe. Well, you know Tuktamishva, that's her money. I mean, come on, that is. But oh. it's not going great for her. So, I, but Carolina, I really, you know, that's. Um, I I really liked her program. The free, I don't like as much. I know that Lori probably had the moment that she wanted to give a skater this music for a long time. If you've read Christine Brennan's book, you know she's a big Janet Lynn fan. And you right. know she was just waiting and Carolina it's is her beautiful moment. And beautiful positions and mm. poses in there, but yeah, overall it just is a little flat. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's I really like the short. I really like the short and I think yeah. that if she could land it uh, with some content, 
um, mm-hmm. that will be uh, the moment. Um, as for Tuktamishva, if you have nothing nice to say, Jonathan, I mean, what what, what is there to say about her at this point? It's, and and Leonova at the same event? Why, why? I mean, yeah, time to say goodbye, Jonathan. Ew. Yeah, where are they now, event? <laughs> can, you, can you say the beautiful Italian lyrics to us? How does it go? Uh, I think it's Conte Partiro. Is con, it? Conte Partiro, oh. yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's that's what we have to say about them. And, but and Gabby, I will be sending her a million dollar uh, music violation fine <laughs> in the mail. Uh, because just when you think that horrible, I played it for everyone at the opera rehearsal yesterday. They're like, oh, are you watching skating? I was watching in my dressing room. And I was like, yes, everyone, please come in here and look at this version of Carmen. And I played that version and everyone was like clutching their pearls and gasping for air. They were like, what is this? I I think it suits her skating. It suits what I think of it. (laughs) She needs her Gucci music. She needs some, she needs some driving stuff. And then just when you thought it couldn't get worse, she pulled out that music in the long program. And I was like, bye, bye. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope you enjoy that world bronze medal. She's an interesting personality. Again, she's someone that I'm not offended that she's Carmen. She seems interesting. Um, I think that there's a lot going on. She's not, she's, I mean, we can't even say that that was Carmen that she was skating to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just can't. I can't. So if I'm rooting for a Canadian, it's Caitlin Austin, and we'll just leave it at that. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. I thought that you were a Chartrand fan after that performance that she did at the Cup of Russia that time. Where... Oh, no, I was a fan of the cameraman. Oh, okay. that Cup of Russia. All right. You... Okay. But let's talk about it because we finally got to see Papadakis and Cesaron. We got to see their short dance. Okay, a really quick. The only other thing I have to say about dance at this event was I didn't realize Sarah Hurtado had partnered up with someone else yes. after she left, left Diaz. And uh, they are training with Julen, and she has the Russian partner. So yes. I'm very intrigued what happens with the Olympics for well, ice. Because she went to Europeans last year. and It's like a 12th or 16th. Or like she was way down. You know I love Marie France. You know I love her. Um, Dubre, you know, as we learn how to pronounce her name. And we're like really on board with her. Mm-hmm. I can't with the Smart and Diaz programs this year. They, the one about the man and the woman, and even though it's just... Well, that's why I was wondering if this... And it's Russian... really all about the patriarchy because it's like that man makes you feel like a woman. So it's like you're not even really strong on your own making yourself feel like a woman. It's really just a man's world. I get it. Okay. That was... Um... Two Russian singles program, too. Yes. It's a man's world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like really... It was like a little bit Nina Mosiery for me. Um, yeah. And I feel like they look really sloppy. Um, and as much as I loved that team and I was listening to Circles all the time last year, they never seemed to improve their unison as the season went on, nor did they ever look more trained um, throughout the season. Right. And I think that uh, Sara Hurtado, I think I'm, I might be team her uh, moving forward. It'll just depend also, though, I don't know what his... Because Citizenship. He's, no, I don't know what... The, you know, as a long-time Spanish citizen, he is, you know struggling to get to the Olympics, as opposed to the other longtime Spanish citizen from Great Britain, uh, yeah. <laughs> Olivia Smart. Um, yes. Okay. No, but she also, did get her citizenship. We saw her passport on, um, we saw her passport on Instagram. It looked oh. like she, she Google translated a couple of words. Um, and she, like, Jason, yeah, okay. <laughs> like Jason Brown, see, but Jason Brown actually had a Japanese tutor that would right. write those speeches for him. That he right. gives. So when, yeah, and they like they phonetically write it out and they have him oh, practice. Yeah. yeah. So I think that some of these other skaters need to really be working it. Who's the skater that's failing the language exam? There was something, someone was telling Bruno. us. Bruno can't pass his German proficiency exam to get the thing. If, if you can't go to the Olympics because you're not getting your dirty DOS right on a test, and I don't think it's that difficult, but all right. And don't so. the, okay, so he's from France. And don't they learn more languages earlier? Like they're a little bit better about the public education yeah, the thing? Yeah, French the romantic language, so he's probably better at Spanish and Italian than he would be at German. It's the English speakers that do better at German. Right, but still, you, you would think. Yeah. He's, you, you, been you in Ger- he's been yeah. in Germany 
for yeah. training for three to four years now. They are in the army. Don't you think that when they are yelling at you in the summer to move, yeah. that you would learn a little bit of German and perhaps... And learn how to conjugate those verbs. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> if they're not learning how to land the throws on one foot, maybe we could at least learn how to conjugate the verbs. All right, this is... Just saying. Just saying. Meanwhile, in the world of Latin dance. <laughs> okay, so people, I have done a little research mm-hmm. because people are going to complain and we just need to put a blanket statement. So apparently the rumba, um, which is not really a real rumba, whatever, but it's, they're supposed to be Latin programs. Apparently the ISU is trying to emulate the contemporary dance world of ballroom Latin. And apparently... Mm-hmm. What's really big there now, you're going to hate it, Jonathan, but I'm just telling you, is when they do the Latin, apparently the Papadox and Ciceron rumba, as well as the Virtue and Moyer rumba, are very in touch with what they're doing in the ballroom Latin world, where if you're like one of the competitors from Dancing with the Stars and previously competed internationally, like the Huffs or Cheryl Burke or the Schmerkowskis, who are apparently really shit dancers and choreographers, according to Emily Tuttle. They're like the bottom okay. of the barrel and only get by on their looks. Um, yeah, okay. Um, apparently, if you're in that real world, it's like pop songs that are Latin remixed, and that's what they're now doing. So they even have music problems in the dance world. It's not just skating where music is offensive. They now have bad music in the... It's offensive everywhere. Yes, yeah. so th- okay. this, is some, this is a trend that's happening. So actually, this rumba is quite appropriate for what is considered very current. And okay. that, Marie France seems like someone who does some research uh, with that. I actually liked the program, uh, the short dance. I especially liked the first half a lot. Um, mm-hmm. It was better than I expected. I think that they were really smart to go to Christopher Dean because it's all about the skating narrative. You know that Jason Brown has never left Corey, even because he can't get the triple axel or the quad, but he could say that like Brian Boitano, he was with the same teacher since birth. Right. You know, she induced labor. Maybe they'll leave that out. But <laughs> that sounds a little... But he was with the much. same okay. coach since he was learning how to fall on the ice, on right. his tee stops, and he's with... It's endearing. Team. Yeah. Right. It's endearing. They are the innovators on the ice. We've never seen anything like them before. And they're working with the last innovator on the new innovator. I mean, that is branding, Jonathan. That is two... Okay. Se- Moment of honesty. Yeah. I'm obviously obsessed with Christopher Dean and Jane Torvald and love all this stuff. And I really liked what he was doing with the Duchesnais. Mm-hmm. But since then, when someone goes and collaborates or he has choreographed something, I don't... Not a I huge fan. that it still yeah. translates to greatness like it once did or like he did yeah. with the Duchesnais. I don't think I, he's a great IJS person. He did do good work, I think, with Piper and Paul, especially with that Hitchcock program. Um, that... Did Christopher Dean do their Hitchcock yes. program? Oh, well, then I take it back. That was exquisite. Okay, yeah. but I rem- even remember when Michelle did her bolero and, like, Christopher Dean helped choreograph it. And right, I was like... but remember, that was, like, she was, like, take putting in and taking out choreography from event to event. You know, I yeah. don't know if anyone can really be blamed for that point. I think there was a hip. I think that there was a lot going on. I think that we were hanging on by okay. a thread um, to our careers at that moment. Um okay. Okay, you know, wearing a gold dress and channeling and hoping that, you know, we would squint and pretend that it was like the good old days. I mean, okay. Got I it. think there was a lot happening. You know, I just, okay. that was when even Dick Button badmouthed her at the Nationals. Do you remember? At yeah. The Nationals. Think, yeah. He was yeah. like, this is last year's program to new music. Yeah. Who knew that that was going to become the thing in skating? Um, exactly. Three years in a row. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. There, I think that if Virtue and Moyer are sitting at home mm-hmm. watching this, Moulin Rouge is what it is. Moonlight Sonata is what it is. Mm-hmm. If Virtue and Moyer are going to make their move, it's going to be by tightening up their short dance so that they're almost four or five points ahead going into the free. And I don't know that they could be four or five points ahead. I think that they have an advantage. And the big, and the Virtue and Moyer's short dance advantage comes to a couple of things. Uh, the pattern is... They have their pattern could be like a plus ten. Um, it goes to plus three. On the head when you were talking about their experience with compulsory, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it 
I, I, you, that was a really excellent point that you made because you see that difference in the And they were also excellent at compulsories even at the time. I mean, I think that that was a little political that we put the Russians first in the compulsories at the Olympics in Vancouver, um, but they probably deserved to win the compulsories there. And they were even good at them as young skaters, um, yeah. which probably is their early training and all of right. that Canadian, the Bev Smith, Steve Milton book about them and their perfect partnership. And if you're buying all of that that they're selling. Um right. I think that the big element that they also have a strong a strong advantage over the French is on the no touch step sequence. They have traditionally done very well on that element throughout their entire careers. They're both really strong skaters, and I think that they are stronger and more similarly matched than Gabby and Guillaume. And I think that that can sometimes really emphasize itself during the short dance. Uh, I think that <clears throat> they have more issues with the matching and the hitting of the same edges at the same just look doing that as cohesively and as into the choreography they both have similar actual step sequences where they kind of stop and boogie and then go back into it um i don't think that the difference in the short dance is as great this year as last year we have to remember at worlds the french had a lot of problems in the short dance and if they skate cleanly like they did this year i think it's going to be a lot closer I think then there are a couple other things that are interesting going on here. We are probably going to see the Canadians skate twice at the Olympics. So we are going to see their Moulin Rouge in the team event because Canada is probably going to get the gold medal. France is not likely to be in the top five based on that they don't have a man or a really consistent lady. So I think that that's going to be a problem for them that they're well, not a problem for them that's actually going to work for the french because we're only going to see moonlight sonata once and the one thing about the french is that they can create such a spell that woman was crying at the worlds right. and they have that moment in time quality like you see them oh my god we're gonna see well, the moonlight. And seeing the free dance here with quality cameras and quality <laughs> sound i yeah. was i was pretty blown away yeah i think it's a really it's them it's great it's it's very, it shows them, there's a reason they do that style, they do it very well, and it masks everything that's... And there's just, each moment is followed by another unique moment. They're doing like that, that spin, and then he like spins out from underneath her and goes, and I was just like, every last thing, it just leaves you a little breathless in, a, in an amazing way. And you know I how feel tide can turn in skating, how like sometimes what you like about someone is what you hate about them the next year? And I think with Tessa and Scott, it's interesting. The fact that they're repeating lifts in the free skate has this kind of stale buzz about them. And I think the other death knell for them was the fact that they won the world title on the strength of a short dance lead and that they still made a mistake in the free dance. And one is that that really gen engendered a lot of like support for the French. You know, they, they were kind of the ones who just missed out, who skated so well, who created such a moment. And that's a great way to get a lot of just momentum and energy going in your direction. It's Killing for an audience or anyone when an event has been won by the short program. Right? Yeah, and I feel like that gets even the judges and everyone in skating being like, hmm, are they that much better? Are they that better to win on a short? It's never a good thing. It always, I think it works against you. And obviously they didn't try to win it. You know, mistakes happen, but I think that just the confluence of events, I don't think that, I think that, look, Canada, I think is going to win the team event. I think Tessa and Scott are going to have a huge part of that reason why they're going to win the team event when you put them i think that tessa and scott have to skate lights out with moulin rouge and i think that they'll have to tweak the program a bit really highlight the drama i think it's going to be a really close competition and i don't i don't think it's for sure that tessa and scott are going to win even if they are the stronger skaters overall i think that the french vehicle of the free dance doing a, a style that is so successful I don't know. I, I'm curious to see, because well, we've seen the French skate twice, so I want to see Moonlight Sonata again to really start to kind of parse them ahead. But I also didn't love Tessa and Scott's short dance as much as I loved their short dance last year. I rewatched it today. I mean, they, to see them, it's going to be closer, I think, than last year. And I think that that's yeah. going to be more interesting in the competition. I think it's definitely, there could be shifting between event and event. I don't think it's a slam dunk. And then you have to get into the political angle. Which will be huge, and we know our French friend DDA he, was he not is, happy that he's, on, that. he's yeah. on it. You know he's on it. They got like an impossible score in the short dance. I think it was like very close to their personal best ever. Uh, 
And it is October. I didn't think it was their greatest. I thought it was a good performance. Uh, I, And then we have to think about the fact that any time there has been a French skater even close to the podium, they typically manage to get on. I mean, Felice, Philippe Candeloro medaled not once but twice at the Olympics. Jonathan, not once but twice. The first Fo- one I was like, huh. And the second one I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> and how many times has a French skater or team beaten a Canadian right. and had anything to do with a Canadian getting like robbed at the Olympics? DDA right. has been involved from the very beginning. Uh, yeah. I think that, yes, I think that, yes, I think that he's going to do everything he can, All as he should in his position, um, yeah. to, to make them successful. Um, oh. And Canada's obviously gotten better at the politics, too, since the IJS. I mean, certainly the U.S. just lost everything and our mojo. Um, yeah, I, I think that the French are going to win. I do. I think that they have the edge. Um, and I think that there's a lot of factors that are going to be working in their favor. It will be a fun, it will be a fun Grand Prix for the yes. dance and for that. I think it's going to be really fun. And I'm going to be interested to see how it plays out. Yeah, I just see. Don't you see the fluff piece of like... Papadox and Cizeron, like, watching Christopher Dean, talking about how they, too, want to be inventive, and you're competing... I, I mean, I don't know. I think... I just wonder. Um, and, like, are people going to really feel bad not giving Virtua and Moira a gold medal if they're already getting another gold in the team event and they have so many medals? People in skating don't usually feel bad for anyone. So uh, that's an interesting kind of thing going on. It's going to be a very close competition. I think it... I think... A lot of things could... There are a lot of different variables here going on, but I think the fact that they're only going to do their free dance once, we're already going to see Moulin Rouge. So I think that if we buy into the Tessa and Scott story about them knowing each other since they were fetuses, about them being matched and being being perfect and then being best friends and then being stronger together than apart, and I feel like every program they have is about that they went through this period where they weren't talking or communicating with each other, and then they got back together, and now they're holding on, like in Latch. And then... Maybe that can be Nate and Diaz. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, I feel like Come What May also has that kind of, like, same story again, and I'm just... I don't know. I don't know if we're feeling it as much. At least, I don't know if I'm feeling it as much. I mean, I... But I love them so much that when we see them skate, it's just... It's undeniable, the quality. You know? Yes. So... So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. It's going to be an exciting competition. I mean, we have not seen Chalk and Bates and the Shibutani's. We've seen just about everyone else. So yeah. what has been your moment of the Senior Bees so far this season? Oh, gosh. I think that Deanna and Nate, the Kristen Cry, was yeah. a pretty epic moment. Um, yeah. Also, a little shout out to Oda, who did a really nice quad toe, triple toe, and then another quad toe in the mm-hmm. Japan Open. I was like... More power to you. He must have eaten that egg that he did the commercial for. Look, we could give him the third spot in Japan. They don't have a third man that we need to send to the I'm, Olympics either. That, I was like, I wonder if they'd push him back in. <laughs> Go back to the... Get that Chaplin program dusted off and you get out there, okay? You know what? Put him in there. And um, I was doing a little Googling. Apparently, Yuri and Ice is going to have a movie, but not a season two, or season two is later. There are some anime fans here who can tell us all about this, so when you're not yelling at all of our opinions, let us know what's going on with that. What are the details on this movie? You know, what's going on? I thought that we were back training in Russia for the Olympic season, and I was ready for a season two. And is Marin Honda's sister still acting? Is she still in the performances? You know I watched that whole series, just because you told me to, about the dead housekeeper. Did you love it? It was odd. It was odd. <laughs> it was like parts of my life I'll never get back, but you know, that's all right. <laughs> um, it was a huge hit in Japan, and I thought she did very well, and I'm terrified of that housekeeper. But also, so there has been, like, I've read comments about, like, even Phil Hirsch said that the sister, Sada, who is just apparently a Japanese name, um, which we learned last season, um, that she can do like almost a triple axel. And then we saw videos of her doing doubles and people were like, no, she can do triples. And we have seen no real evidence of like a real... So I want to see good videos of the younger Honda sister landing real triple jumps, not fake news triple jumps. For I... a long time it's been, it's been, her potential has been talked about, but I've not yeah, seen it. Yeah, because this yeah. 
I don't think that, that Miyu has um, the talent. I think that she's got the fame from the show and she's a sister and we want to yeah. see her in shows, but it's a little bit Chika Suguri, um, Maya Sada, not even Maya Sada level. I think that um, as much as we love all of the Hondas and she's adorable and we watched her show, the other Honda sibling, um, let's know what's going on with that. Um, and old videos of the brother, apparently he and Shoma used to be like neck and neck back in the day and then he got injured and Shoma just kept... Yeah. Oh, a whole history. Yeah, okay. and there's an older sibling that doesn't skate. There are, like, older Hughes siblings going on. So how did they get attacked to, attached to skating? Is it, like, you know, is it just, like, serendipitous? Was it, like, the Shibutani parents that, like, pushed them into skating and, like, maybe oh. named them after Usub and Zulin? You know, these are the things that we really need to investigate, Jonathan, this season. Exactly. We need to be on it. Because we are about to read so many articles this season about these yeah. skaters as the general public gets into skating and i think the general public may be interested in the men of fs blog i think that that could be a buzzfeed article yeah yeah jonathan you know let's get writing and i think uh there's a lot to talk about so as always we want to remind you to hold an edge i mean tie your man bun show your man bun hope that jonathan likes you as much as he's excusing paulina this week hold an edge and look sexy bye guys